As a wildlife apprentice, I had no idea that my end goal was to be David Attenborough's maid, but it is that, and in that journey, I have discovered ways to get there faster, and unique opportunities lie ahead for us. All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. So I had a very interesting idea. Camera Canada, of course, has lent us the Canon R5C. It's been the most annoying camera I've ever used. Just so many little quirks. We'll get to those. But I thought I had the 100mm macro, 2.8, 1080p, 120 frames per second raw in a Super 16 crop, 2.76K, that becomes... I should have done the math. I was about to get my calculator when I realized 100 times 2.76 is very easy. So this is a 276 mil. I was like, I might have something there. So I took it out for a wildlife extravaganza macro, and I have a couple more ideas that might work out. We'll talk about those, but let's get to the footage. But thankfully a pigeon was nearby, and David Attenborough, look out. Somebody's gonna be cleaning your dishes soon, and uh, I think I know who, me. So here's a pigeon in a forest, never been seen before. We have some tunna there. Not that he's in focus anymore, he walked away from my focal point, but I, I re-got him. He's a scared, scared of that bee. That was funny, he freaked out. Oh, the bee wins. Bee wins this round, huh? Now, I gotta tell you, even though that was just a pigeon on grass, I'm not sure I've seen anything more magical. That was raw. Do I know how to grade it? No, but I did somehow. But that brings me to the first unforgivable flaw of this camera is you cannot set shutter speed to any dial. There's three dials. Not one of them is allowed to because you're supposed to be in the perfect shutter. 180 degree would never break that rule. Bunch of losers out there. Oh, I'll just stop down with the aperture. Never go against the tone. You never do. But that's the thing with cinema cameras. Apparently they just, they don't auto expose like a regular camera does. And that's really annoying. It, like, do you have any idea how many shots? I was like, okay, that's not exposed. And you have to press a button to get into shutter and then the back wheel. I made it work, kind of. Some of these shots are exposed, some are a little noisy, but that was so irritating. Didn't stop me from getting another Robin in a forest hopping away. Oh, he left. Um, he sure did leave, but I got him again. Uh, I recovered the shot. It's a little noisy. I'm sure, you've, it's just a Robin, 1% of the shot, but filling the frame is so 1992. You can see I'm changing the exposure while I'm recording, just hoping to God to get the shot, but no, the squirrel's like, I don't have time for this, buddy. Just get your shit together, then I'll see you later. In this perfect shot of a squirrel, nothing obstructing his eye. Thankfully, you can see into the window of the soul. The eye is the most important part, and nothing's covering it in this perfect shot. I'm in Canon RAW, by the way. RAW footage here, and I'm a cinematographer, basically. If you're wondering why today's audio sounds like I'm recording from a light bright machine, it's because I'm using a shotgun mic on the camera because this piece of shit doesn't want to work with my Audient ID14 anymore. It's been hissy lately and I'm like, it's not amping up for some reason. I need the Zoom F3, I think. That's what I'm gonna get. It's not even available yet. Should I keep the mic in the shot even though it's not doing anything. I saw a chipmunk and I tell you, this just has lens stabilization. It's good enough. If you're in 120 frames per second or more, I don't think you need like dual sync stabe with IBIS and lens stabe. All you need is decent lens stabe. You might not even need that, but I think you do. And that opens up the world. There's so many options now that don't have IBIS, but like super freaky cinema cams and slow-mo cams that if you just have a nice stabilized lens, the world might be your oyster, my friend. And by the way, this was the first time I've ever left my house with a full battery charge and had to stop because the battery died. And I didn't have another one. I've never had that happen. Usually on the Fuji, it's three days of footage and then maybe the spare comes out. Unfreaking. And if you're wondering if I could have just shot in 4K 120p and cropped in later to match this 1080p raw? No, not even close. The raw is so much better 
cropped in camera. Like, it's beautiful. It's beautiful footage. And that makes me think, sensor size isn't the thing here. I know I've ragged on Micro Four Thirds for a while now. It's just because the Micro Four Thirds cameras right now suck at making good video codecs. So like Olympus, you're not gonna get much from that. It's a decent, okay, acceptable image, but you have like a Blackmagic 6K with like, it's cropping in even tinier than micro one inch sensors. But like beauty is upon us because they know what they're doing. So you could optimize Aries Super 35 better than any full frame we know of. So it's not just sensor size, it's intelligence coupled with sensor size could be mm. it was at this point that i started to look down instead of looking around for like squirrels and robins it's like you have a macro lens my friend use it use it wise one it's like stop looking out in the distance with your 270 mil lens so we got some magical moth moments i got even closer on them it was so that depth of field is so thin it was tough to have like the eyes in and nothing else is. I don't know, you'd have to stop down to Tony 37. And I did, I did. I moved in for the perfect, oh, no, no I didn't. Then I saw a fly, it was the perfect moment to, oh no, he's gone. Okay, there he is, there he is. Oh man, little fly details. I could have got much closer. I did actually, didn't I? And he flew off, he didn't actually fly. It was boring, so I left. But he reminds me of like an Egyptian overlord painted in gold, some type of criminal. I don't know, it's pretty beautiful. Like an, a warlord army. He's protected, that's for sure. And he has hairy eyes. Those scare me. I don't like this at all. But the macro world's kind of fun. Like this little moth I had, what is that little thing he's coiling? He has a little spiral thing. That's probably something he used to steal like loaves of bread or something. He just grabs them off the shelf, flies off. That's rude, but that's cool. And they're furry, cute and furry. Certainly he would never leave my shop. up. No, yeah, he would. So that got me thinking, that was pretty magical. Canon raw footage, extra super lens. Like you could even, you could do like a 135, 1.8, something like that. Telephoto almost, something magic. So. Blackmagic 6K, that does like a 2.8K 120 frames per second, but it's a 3.3880 times crop. So if, that's a Canon EF mount, hmm. 70 to 200, 2.8, stabilized lens, dare you dream it? That becomes a 677 mil telephoto lens, 2.8, no longer. So Tony 9.5, that's somewhat in the ballpark. Fuji's an 8.4 equivalent. I think that's enough. That's barely worse. It's expensive. That would be expensive and heavy. Still, it would be good. But I have a feeling that Blackmagic 6K doesn't auto expose. Can you tell me that? Does it do auto ISO and auto shutter like real filmmakers use or what? Do I have to do it because when you have to think of exposure on top of framing and focus, you miss it. You miss the world. Unless it's like tiny stuff that waits there for you. Some animals are polite and they sit there and they're like, go ahead, film me. I want to be on your show. And then, okay, you have time tweaking shit, dials. Like this bee, I saw him on the ground. He was, I don't know, he was injured or something. I felt bad. He was breathing heavy. He was drinking the night before. I was like, you know what? Let's get in front of him, get a magical look. So I did, and he was crawling before me. None of it's in focus yet. I was like, stop moving. I, I only had the back part. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, we'll get the eyes. There's like nothing else in focus, but that was a cool little moment. He's like, he waited for me. I had just enough time to manually expose, and I thought it looked pretty good. But still, if it was auto-exposing, it would have been much easier for me. Which brings us to another little side rant. The zebras in this thing weren't doing what I think they should. I had it at 100% clipping, so I know any highlights clipped, I back it off. But like they weren't showing up and the metering was right in the middle. And I was like, 
which one's good? Like, you would have to go so over to get those zebras to show up. I didn't get it. I hate this. And then I turned the waveform on. It didn't do anything. It wasn't registering anything. It was just the box. And I was like, why are the default settings so hard? Why is life so hard? Why do you make this so bad? I hate you. I saw this chipmunk resting on a tree. By the time I got my exposure dialed in, he was gone. Gone into the mist. Oh man, that's what I ended up with. This shot. He's less than half a percent of the shot. But if I crop in post, wow. There we have it. Best footage. I got this squirrel. He looked at me. That was a good shot. Everything's exposed. He's in focus. What a moment. And then he reaches behind the tree, he's gonna take off. And I get a close-up of the claw grip he had on our hearts. Here he's making his move, and there I'm still focused on his claw on purpose, showing you that he has a way of staying up there when we don't. My next freak combo would be the Kronos 2.1 HD. It's a slow motion cam, it does a thousand frames per second in HD. I think that would be so magical, but it's a C-mount. And it comes with a C-mount to either EF or Nikon F adapter. That would suck, but a Nikon 200 to 500. That's stabilized, I think. And then you get your little C-mount. The camera itself has memory, and that's how much you can record. So like you have to get the giant package, 32 gigs or something, costs a little more and then you can record like eight seconds or something. And so it's a different thing. Like you record for eight seconds, stop, and then you write that to the SD card and who knows how long that takes. And then you can do your next shot. It's an awkward workflow, but it might be the most magic possible. This ant footage, which is perfectly exposed by the way, that's why there's no noise in the scene. I didn't raise the ISO afterwards in RAW. I wouldn't have to. I did my job as I should have. It was so close, I was like, none of this is in focus, is it? At least it's not noisy though. I don't, I don't even see the noise. I don't mind this noise. <laughs> I was looking at it, I'm like, okay, it's really noisy, but it almost looks filmic and it's noise, the grain. It's not noise, it's grain. Oh, the magic. I backed up a bit just so I would have a bit deeper of a depth of field and I don't know, man, macro life is amazing. And in my opinion, I think Micro Four Thirds would have an advantage if you wanted to do macro life, you get a Panasonic and then your deeper depth of field is a benefit. I'm just saying. Here's my buddy trying out the OM-1. Olympus OM-1, oh my god, he's enjoying it so much right now. A cinematographer at heart, even though he has a tiny Micro Four Loser sensor. And when he gets the footage home, he's gonna cry to himself. It'll be fine. He'll be fine in the morning. Let me know of any freaky options like this that you've thought of that like super crop, but ultimate slow-mo with this lens. Let me know down below if you have anything. Sony FS5. That does 960 frames per second, apparently. You get yourself the 200 to 600, that becomes like a 900. And the, the crop with the 960, it'll look like trash, but the 480p might be usable. That has a little crop, you might be looking at like 1200 mils or something, or more. But does that camera let me auto expose? Probably not. All the cinema cameras, just they're so hard. They make math look fun. It's hard. I saw a slug. Oh man, he was moving, so I, I did the 120 frames per second because you would have missed the shot. He would have just zoomed right past you. I had to freeze it. Trust me, I know my situation. He's about to jump over this log. In real time, that was, he was gone. He was already past it, so I slowed it down for you. You can see his back is moving. He's slimy. It's weird. He has different parts of his body and they glide with a slime-like effort. And I don't mind it. I don't mind the efforts. So even though it was the most frustrating shoot I've ever had, I really enjoyed the results. It was kind of cool to have raw. I don't know what the benefits really were, just more dynamic range, but like it looks really nice. Maybe not this particular shot, but it could have looked nice if it was exposed better. 
It's just using the R5C was so tremendously hard and terrible. And the thing that really sucks is that the R5 would be the superior option with this same exact setup. I'd have animal eye detect, but it's just the files are so hard to edit, whereas they're not in here. They could put these files in the R5. Why aren't they doing it? It's less quality. It's a 420 instead of 422. I want less, not more. Why do you make me suffer? Even though I was able to manually focus track a kingfisher flying across the frame, that you're not on my skill level. I set up that shot so perfectly that, like, I knew where it would go and it wouldn't be obstructed by any trees. I know what I'm doing. You don't. You don't deserve the animal I detect. I could benefit from it, though. All right, last shot. The magical chipmunk sitting in the midst. What's coming to hunt him? A cardinal. Oh, my God. Thank the heavens the cardinal didn't see the chipmunk or he would have picked him up, carried him off to a different neighborhood. That's what they do. That's what they do. I've seen it happen. So think outside the box. Don't just go for the common setup, Canon R5, 100 to 500. I'm like everybody else. Yes, I fit in. Do something completely unheard of and creative and you might get some usable results. Likely not, but you might. I'll probably order the Fuji X-H2S. Why not? Sell the X-T4 if it's better. Then it's not like a huge cost. 16 or 1700 Canadian that's doable. And then boom, we have that. Maybe a 200 to 600 for the Sony. Maybe not. I almost pounced on a combo today. Sony 200 to 600 and Zeiss Battis 18mm 2.8 for 3200 Canadian. Oh, that's a pretty good deal. It was a pretty good deal for that, but I just, I just side rant. I used Catalyst Browse and then I'll leave. I'll leave you alone, but Catalyst Browse destroys your footage. It looks so much worse. I didn't realize that. It's not just the crop. It just, it crops and then destroys. It turns 4K into 1080p. So I was thinking Zeiss Battis 18 mil for the vlogs, Catalyst Browse, whoa. No. So I abandoned that whole deal. Sorry. So let me know your freak setups down below. What did you think of the Canon RAW footage? What did I do wrong with the setups where I can't set shutter to the dial? Was there an easier way I could have exposed my footage? It works in 24p, it auto exposes, but not anything that we want. I'll leave after you buy a Camera Conspiracies t-shirt. Thank you, good audio today.